Children Heard and Seen as a charity specifically for children who have a parent in prison, whether they see their parent or not, and the support is based in their communities. We support children with a parent in prison, providing one-to-one -one group work and volunteer mentoring support. Our support is based in Oxfordshire, and so those children get face-to-face -face support. But the other children we support are based in other locations around the country, and this is an opportunity for everyone to come together. I was really struck by how complex every family is and a lot of the challenges they face happen right the way throughout their journey and I call it like a sort of prison journey and that can be at the point of arrest, first visit, pre-release, post-release, all the way along there families will revisit for support. Some of the real benefits can be that very first telephone conversation with the family when I tell them that you've got us now and we can be here for you and that is really important. So my ex-partner was sentenced when my son was uh, six months old and um, we didn't receive any help until my son was four. We first heard of Children Heard and Seen at a Reading Crown Court open day um, and we just so happened to walk past a stall from Children Heard and Seen. Before Children Heard and Seen we had no support, no acknowledgement. Obviously the prison service knew there was children and so did probation but there was just no support and no acknowledgement of my children. So parental imprisonment is in itself an adverse childhood experience. We know it's the source of trauma. Alongside many other ACEs, we call them. The problem we got at the moment is we don't actually know which children and how many children are actually affected by parental imprisonment. There is no statutory database. There is no automatic referral pathway. Nobody can tell you, anywhere in the world actually, exactly which children are affected where. And the issue with that is then we don't know where to target support. Most people assume that when a parent goes to prison that in some way there's some statutory mechanism picking it up and identifying these children and where necessary giving support. And most people are surprised to hear that actually children aren't picked up. They could be living alone. We've had experiences of that. So Operation Paramount is very simply a way for us to use data that's already available, use it in an innovative and unique way, but use that to identify and recognise young people who may need support and then put support in place to the family at the time that they need it the most. So throughout my career I've seen numerous uh, issues that I believe we could have actually prevented or we could provide a better support to if we'd known about them sooner. So data for Operation Paramount is collected through an information sharing agreement that we have with Her Majesty's Prison and Probation Service. Data has been held by HMPPS for a long time around how people move through the prison estate and the secure estate. So when they enter prison they move from one prison to another prison, then they get released. And that data has always been available to the police, but it's been traditionally used to prepare for release, so to manage offenders, offender management. So we've always been prepared for when somebody gets out, how we can support them so they don't offend again. Operation Paramount uses the exact same data. What we've done is we've flipped it on its head to use it when somebody enters prison. So we approached HMPPS and said, well, can we use this data? It's already there, just for a slightly different purpose and that's what the arrangement is. So Operation Paramount picks up the information of the adult entering the criminal justice system on the day that they enter. It then allows us to compare that data to other data sets we have from the police and other partners to recognise where those children are and then offer that support. So Operation Paramount is actually looking at the data and being able to identify children with a parent in prison. And this piece of work that the police are doing will be groundbreaking in terms of if we can understand what the problem is we can then understand what solutions need to be there. So I think Operation Paramount is going to be really vital in these first steps in making that early identification. I think that families need to know really early on that there, there is something there for them, that somebody will be there for them. There's a real lack of faith in the people around them, the systems, the people they've met, the police they've met, the teachers they've met. And so we have to rebuild that and we have to make sure that they do see the police in a positive light. So once we've used the data and Operation Paramount's kicked in and we've recognised where that child lives and who with, we then approach the family via telephone call and we ask if it's okay for us to come and see them. And we'll ask them whether they're happy for us to come in uniform or they want us not to be in uniform. And then we have local policing champions, Thames Valley police officers who are child-centered, who understand these issues as well as I do. And we just visit the family. We go with kindness and we go with an offer of support. There's no pressure on the families whatsoever. We will not refer anyone to Children Heard and Seen or to any other agency unless the family have consented to that referral. So once the police have made an offer of support to a family, if it's accepted, we'll make that referral there and then, or we'll leave details for them to refer themselves. That's it. 
that point, the police move away and children heard and seen do the amazing work that they do with that family. That's it for Operation Paramount. That's as involved as the police need to be. I think it's really beneficial for the police to identify and then notify uh, families of any support available and that gives families an opportunity to receive that support if they, if they wish to. I think it's really important that children are identified and supported and that stops the sort of intergenerational harm that goes on by parental offending. There needs to be simple support but there needs to be a support mechanism around for children as well as the identification. Operation Paramount is actually just one use case of a whole load of data work we're doing through a project called Thames Valley Together. Now Thames Valley Together is cloud-based, it's a secure data platform that the Thames Valley Violence Reduction Unit have developed and it holds data from those statutory agencies, police, education, social care. Every agency feeds their data in and every agency gets to compare that data amongst the other agencies. We can build an accurate picture of where harm and where risk actually sits and then deploy resources or use the resources of those agencies more appropriately. That information is only shared via information sharing agreements. It's considered through uh, data ethical procedures to make sure it's appropriate. That data isn't accessible by anyone who shouldn't ac access it. That data is used for public good. It's public data held by an agency but used to support public. Good.